Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have e to the power x divided by x equals e, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, I call this a non-standard equation because we have e to the power x, which is the exponential, divided by a linear function, or in general, you can call that a polynomial. So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to look at a couple different things, and I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. All right, let's go ahead and see how we can approach this problem. You're probably thinking, okay, this is too easy. I can just guess and check. But how do you guarantee that those solutions that you found are the only solutions or even whether they are solutions? Obviously, you can check it out, plug it in, but how do you guarantee that there are no other solutions? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this is a function, the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and call this f of x. f of x is equal to e to the power x divided by x. Now we can go ahead and differentiate this function to look at the, the maxima and minima. The derivative is, as you know, the quotient rule, the derivative of the first function times the second and uh, vice versa. And all of that is divided by the second function squared. If you take out e to the x, you're going to get x minus 1 divided by x squared with the e to the x. But e to the x doesn't really matter because we're interested in making it equal to 0. So x equals 1 would be our critical value. Now, we might have a maximum or minimum at that point, like a horizontal tangent. That's why that point is important. It's also going to show us the intervals on which this function is increasing or decreasing. And basically how it behaves, right? So let's go ahead and make a table with three rows we always we always make these tables remember we have the x f prime and f now we're going to go ahead and put the critical value one here that's where the derivative changes and in this case if x is greater than one f prime is going to be positive as you can see otherwise it's going to be negative which means our function is going to decrease and then increase right okay and that means we have a minimum at x equals 1. For x equals 1, we get what? f of 1 is equal to e to the power 1, which is e, divided by 1, which is e, by the way. So, f of 1 is e, or 1 comma e is a point on the graph. What is that supposed to mean, though? Well, it just means that x equals 1 is a solution. Because when you replace x with 1, you get e. So remember our function, or maybe I should write the equation, e to the x divided by x equals e. As you replace x with 1, you get a solution. Okay, is that the only solution? What is the significance of having this function, uh, the minimum point at x equals 1? Well, it just means that we have a horizontal tangent at that point, and that just happens to be 1. So we have a graph that decreases and then increases okay and then we do have a horizontal tangent in between so do you think that's going to be the only solution we kind of need to look at the whole graph and definitely there's another way to look at it too for example consider the equation e to the x divided by x equals e you could also put the e on the left and write this as e to the power x divided by e equals x now this will be e to the power x minus 1 equals x. And of course, in this case, x equals 1 is also a solution because we're talking about the same equation. The difference is we just divided by e and multiplied by x. Does that make a difference? Yes. In this case, x equals 0 is allowed, but with our original function, it should not be allowed. So that's the only difference between these two equations. Now, if we approach it this way, we're kind of getting the following. We have a linear function and an exponential. So let's go ahead and look at the value at which they intersect. For x equals 1, we get e to the power 0 equals 1, which is a solution. But let's also check their derivatives. And in this case, I want to call them f of x and g of x. By the way, we already used f for another purpose. Maybe you may want to use uh, h, g and h. How about this? Let's call this g of x, and let's call this h of x. Now, g prime is going to be e to the power x minus 1, and h prime is just going to be 1. It's constant, because it's a linear 
a graph or function, it's just a straight line, so it's the slope. So the slope of this line is 1, we can call it m, and also if we evaluate g prime at 1, we also get 1. What that means is that the derivative at 1 is 1, which means the slope of the tangent line given to this function, the slope of the line that is tangent to this function, at x equals 1 equals 1. But that line is y equals x. Why? Because it has the same slope. Uh, how do we know it's that line? Maybe it's x plus 1, but they also intersect. So they intersect, and the slope of the line is the same slope as the slope of the tangent line. So what, what am I talking about? I'm basically saying that these two graphs will be tangent. Or, in other words, we're going to have an exponential function, maybe like this. If you think about the graph of y equals e to the power x minus 1, uh, what are you going to have? You're going to have the e to the x basically move to the right, and, for example, for x equals 1, you're going to have 1. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So it's basically, and for x equals 0, you're going to have 1 over e, which is a fraction. So you're going to have something similar, but just a different exponential. That's one of the functions. And the other one is just going to be our y equals x line. And notice that the slope, the slope of the tangent at x equals 1 is 1, which is the slope of y equals x, which means there is only one intersection point, which means there is only one solution, which means x equals 1 is the only solution to e to the power x divided by x equals e, which we wrote in a different form, obviously, but uh, it doesn't matter as long as we're not considering x equals 0, we are in good shape. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple different things here, and then we'll finish up with some comments, okay? So, first thing we're going to look at is the solution. Uh-oh, what is going on here? Okay, if you consider the original equation and work it out a little bit, you're going to arrive at something like this. Let me quickly show you how this can be done. This is, by the way, Lambert's W function. It's kind of giving you the n bra different branches for every value of n. Obviously, we do get a different branch of the Lambert's W function, but in general, you can consider the, you know, uh, the one of the branches that would work for real numbers. In this case, it would look like this. You basically write this as cross multiply or flip. You could kind of write it like this. And then this gives you x times e to the negative x equals 1 over e. Obviously, to be able to apply Lambert's, you do need a minus sign. And then once you apply w on both sides, this should give you the result. Make sense? Because this will be negative x, of course, then you would need to put the minus sign on the right hand side, which should give you the solutions. And here's the graph by Wolfram Alpha, which is pretty nice and scaled appropriately. So it can fit on the screen. As you can see, the horizontal line is tangent, therefore there's only one solution. And the graph by Desmos is very similar to this one, but you know, scaling is a little different there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.